It is a very great privilege and honor to be able to welcome Dr. Mustafa Tseric to speak to us this morning. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Praise be to God who has made this morning the sun to rise on time and on right place. Praise be to God for giving us the faculty of love to respond to the call to come to the Yale University and to have the joy of reflecting on God and neighbor. I am really honored to be with you, especially because the heart of His Highness is so big that I always feel that I am in it more than I feel. But I felt this time very strongly when he promoted me into the Sharif. So thank you very much, Your Highness. I accept this promotion. <laughs> My co-patriot, Professor Wolf, had common had common state with me and we lost this commonality. Now we are rediscovering a new common world. So I didn't miss the common state, but I was enriched by the common world. So thank you for inviting us here. Your Royal Highness, Professor Wolf, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me to be a part of the common action for the common world view of those who share the belief in one God who created us all from a single soul, who share the same father and mother, Adam and Eve, who share the air they breathe and the rise of the sun they see every day who share Abraham's faith for the glory of God and Noah's ark for the salvation of mankind, who share the love for Virgin Maryam, Mary, and the respect for her son, Isa, Jesus, alayhi salam, who share the true stories about Musa, Moses, alayhi salam, and his divinely guided people around the Sinai Desert, who share the divine word of the Holy Quran, and the life experience of the Messenger Muhammad alayhi salam. And I am honored to be in the boat with those who have no choice but to accept the ethics of sharing as the right way for human progress. Indeed, I feel privileged to be one of those Muslim scholars who in Pope Benedict XVI's Regensburg University lecture on September 13, 2006, saw the opportunity for an open and constructive Muslim-Christian dialogue rather than Christian-Muslim blameful claims. It is God's grace that we have His Royal Highness, Prince Ghazi bin Mohammed bin Talal of Jordan, who took the lead in reminding the world of the fact of the common world between Muslims and Christians for the sake of the common good for the whole humanity. It is Prince Ghazi's stubbornness of love, his fearness of moral clarity, his quietness of courage, his indivisibility of integrity, and his ability to organize a joint dissenting voice that brought us here for love of God and love of neighbor. It should be no, it should be no surprise that there Yale was among the first to recognize the importance of the Muslim message because Professor Miroslav Wolf has just founded the Yale Center for Faith and Culture for such good news. 
it is obvious that two evils do not make up one good, but two goods do make up a double good of this conference under the two good leadership of Prince Ghazi and Professor Wolf. It is my sense that we have not even touched the face of Jewish, Christian, Muslim communities. Ours is not the problem of difference. Ours is the problem of similarity. Don't forget, those who are similar are often more severe toward each other than to the different. Thus, it is time that we, the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims learn how to live with our similarities, especially in the Holy Land, which should be not the peace of the Holy War, but the house of the Holy Peace for all. Now, let me conduct a test with you about our common or similar world. I will read the following statements, and you will tell me, by raising your hand, from which of the three Holy Scriptures, the Old Testament, the New Testament, or the Quran, are the following statements. Are you ready? Okay. I read first. O children of Israel, remember my favor wherewith I favored you and how I preferred you to call to all creatures. Who is for Old Testament? Raise your hand. New Testament? The Quran? Okay. <laughs> okay, the second. O Adam, dwell thy and thy wife in the garden, and eat ye freely of the fruits thereof where ye will, but come not near this tree, lest ye become wrongdoers. Old Testament, all right, New Testament, Quran. Three, and remember when we did deliver you from Pharaoh's folk, who were afflicting you with dreadful torment, slaying your sons and sparing your women, that was a tremendous trial from your Lord. Old Testament, New Testament, Quran. And remember when we did appoint for Moses forty nights of solitude, and we chose the calf when he had gone from you and were wrongdoers. No, Quran, all right. <laughs> and when the angel said, O Mary, lo, God has chosen thee and made thee pure and has preferred thee above all women of creation. Old Testament, New Testament, the Quran. Okay. Now, if I go further, I will, uh, you will not pass the exam, but I will stop here. <laughs> So let me, let me tell you, all these statements are from the Qur'an only, of course. But you are experts in religions, this is why you know it. But when I go, when I go to other places, they fail, they say. But anyway, those of you who thought them to be from the Old or New Testament are just the proof for the common world between us that should lead us to our common love of God and our common love of neighbor. But let me put the Muslim-Christian-Jewish comparison in somewhat different perspective. In a general sense, if I am correct in my ignorance, hope is one of the main themes in Judaism, and love is the one of the main themes in Christianity, whereas justice, adl, is one of the main themes in Islam. The Muslim scholars agree that the mission of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had two objectives. A, the revival of Abraham's monotheism Tawheed, and B, the establishment of Moses' law, Sharia. 
In other words, the Meccan period of the Prophet Muhammad's mission was dedicated to the revival of the formula of the truth of monotheism, La ilaha illallah, which is in fact the first tenant of the Ten Commandments of the Old Testament. While the Medina period was dedicated to the establishment of a just society, the adoption of the famous Medina constitution. Therefore, there are two fundamental tenets of Islam, truth and justice. The Muslim insistence on truth and justice, however, is not always properly understood. Some see it as the Muslim attempt to hold the monopoly on the whole truth, and the others see the Muslim justice as a violation of human rights. Of course, it is not true that the Muslims have the monopoly of the whole truth for the simple fact that the Quran calls for the common world between Jews, Christians, and Muslims who have responded to it by an open letter to the world as well as by this and other conferences around the world. As to the idea of justice, I would say that it should be tempered with love and mercy. That is particularly needed in the Sunni law and theology because in the case of Shia theology, as far as I know, we already have the idea of Irfan as a way of mystical love for God. Whereas in the case of the Sunni theology that has been left, that we has been left to the Sufi school as a separate body of Islamic spirituality. Abu Hamid al-Ghazali is the best example of the need of the Sunni law and theology to be tempered with a Sufi kind of love of God and human love of neighbor. Al-Ghazali could not find that in the fiqh and kalam because the former is dead deduced to the unreachable, unreachable justice and the latter is reduced to the uncertain reason. Sure, all humans will be brought to the final divine judgment, but our reja, hope, should be that merciful God will judge us not by his justice, but by his love and mercy. But also, men should be mindful and fearful khawf of God's punishment because of his misconduct and mischief. It is often a matter of preacher's choice to speak of hope for paradise, targhib, or to highlight the horror of hell, targhib. It might be that for some people the horror of hell is deterrent, but human mind cannot operate in despair. Since it is very fragile, the human soul needs love and care. It needs help to overcome despair. It needs justice tempered with love. It is this Imam Ali saying that we have to hear. The political power might last with infidel infidelity, but it cannot continue with injustice. Al-Mulku yabqa ma'al-Kufri wala yabqa ma'al-Zulmi. Here is the right time and right place for us Muslims to respond to the Christian call for love. But also, here is the right time and right place for you Christians to answer to the Muslim call for justice. We have to be honest to each other. The Muslims, the Christians believe that Muslims hate them, while the Muslims believe that the Christians are unjust to their cause. Our Jewish brothers should not feel abundant from the story of love and justice because in it there is hope that our relationship will be the one of justice for all in our common land and the one of love of God and love of neighbor wherever we are. Because we all take different paths in life, but no matter where we go, we take a little of each other everywhere. It is well known that 20th century physics discovered Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. It confirms that it is difficult to truly know 
any measure everything about an object, whether it is an electron or a rabbit, because the very act of observing it changes its behavior. Therefore, other human, therefore, other than humans, everything else can only be known through isolation. We humans are completely different. We can only be known and we can only know ourselves through interaction with the world around us. In contrast to electrons and rabbits, we, can, we come to know ourselves through the research and modification of our relationship toward the other human beings who are both similar with and different from us. The vitality of faith is in its resistance to be subdued to the exhausted history which cannot reach out beyond its own exhaustion. Consequently, faith is the biggest challenge to the believers themselves, who very often lose the transcendental meaning of history because of their exhaustion in the exhausted history of their own. The core of the religious worldview is the connection of the transcendental Ghaib or Batin with the immanent Shahid and Zahir. The Ghaib is just absent, it is not non-existent. And the Batin is just hidden, it is not dead. The Shahid is just present, it is not eternal. And the Zahir is just apparent, it is not essential. This world, a dunya, is here and now, present and apparent, but it is not eternal and it is not essential. The other world, al-akhirah, is absent and hidden, but it is eternal and essential. Hence, the mission of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not to invent the new faith, but to affirm the old truth and to integrate the transcendental with the imminent, to assure man that he has purpose which goes beyond himself, and to raise the community so that it may play the role both of the affirmative history and the integrative force. It is always the balance between seemingly excluding elements that makes faith an attractive and inclusive force. This is true not only with regard to the theological or metaphysical worldview, but also with regard to the historical or political action. The integration of al dunya with al akhirah is derived from the divine source, but the theological concept of it is a human act. Therefore, the act of integrating and balancing is not an accidental thought but the substantial divine concept on the basis of which human models could be made. In other words, the principle of the integration of the dunya with the akhirah is the paradigm for the integration of all extremes which make up the balance of the whole. Thus, since faith, iman, is the integrative force between strongly related values, the faithful, mu'min, is the integrative agent between apparently interdependent realities. This makes us understand clearly why the faithful community has been given the role of the integrative position in history, as it is stated in the Quran, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ وَيَكُونُوا الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا It is God who has made you to be the integrative community, Ummatan Wasatan, so that you may be witnesses for man and that the messenger may be a witness for you. I have translated the Quranic word Wasatan as integrative rather than justly balanced as it is Yusuf Ali's translation of it or middle way as others would say to give to the Muslim community. In order to give to the Muslim community the meaning of the active rather than the passive witness. And this is what is the Ummah meant to be, the universal community in the middle of the world affairs who has the active task of connecting, attracting, 
and integrating the immeasurable greatness of the divine with the immeasurable diversity of human. Furthermore, the Ummah has the task of connecting, attracting and integrating the similar elements of the divine message of Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon all of them, into the concept of common human destiny based on a covenant that is morally binding and a contract that is legally workable. Indeed, the Muslim Ummah today has the historic opportunity to make a kind of reunion of the Abrahamic traditions that share the common world and common destiny. Hence, the Muslim initiative, a common world between you and us, should be taken seriously and should be further developed to become the common sense of humanity. Indeed, the Muslims must act as the integrative force in the world and the active witness in history. This is both their doctrinal obligation and their historical right. Their obligation is based on the doctrine of the position of the wasat, which requires the balanced approach to all aspects of human life leading to the integration of all good in the world. And their right is based on the historical fact of the integration of the human thought in Baghdad in the 8th century by translating Greek philosophy. This was followed by the Cordoba, Spain, where the Muslims continued to play the role of the integration of rational philosophy through the work of Ibn Rush Avaros in 12th century, the result of which was European humanism and Renaissance. The West Islamic cultural integration has been the productive during the last two or three centuries. The initiative came from the West, whereby major Western universities opened the departments for Islamic studies, that is the study of Arabic language and Islamic culture in the broadest sense of the world. It is due to these Islamic studies in the West that we have today valuable references of Islamic culture which are relevant not only for the West but also for Islam. The works such as Islamic Encyclopedia, the Index of Hadith, and the editions and translation of the fundamental Islamic theological and philosophical works, which are available to the academic community in the West, are the undisputable proof of the Western contribution to the development of the West Islamic cultural integration. Thus, we have the pattern of Muslims being both inter inter integrative force and historical witness to the human intellectual progress in Baghdad and Cordoba when they had been obviously active, but also we have the example of Muslims being integrated into the cultural making by the West when they become noticeably passive. Today, I believe, Muslims are experiencing both the phenomenon of being inter integrative and integrated. The integrative are those who seek knowledge even if in China, and the integrated are those who are doing little or nothing but complaining about everything and everyone who is doing anything that is out of their reach. The Muslims in the West have the unique opportunity to be the integrative force in promoting the high value of love of God and love of neighbor by word and deed. Because love is such a value that the more you give it to others, the more you have it for yourself. But if you keep love for yourself only, you don't have it at all. Our faculty of love is the proof that there is beloved worthy of our love. It means that not everything is worthy of our love and devotion. Therefore, we have to learn who deserves our love, who is worthy to be in our heart all the time. And there is the common word between us and you. God Almighty and our parents and kids, kinsfolk and orphans and those in need 
and neighbors who are near and neighbors who are strangers, and the communion by your side and the wayfarer ye meet and those who are under your influence are worthy of love and respect. For God loves not the arrogant, the vainglorious. وقال تعالى وَعَبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبِ وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَنْبِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَمَا مَلَكَتَ إِمَالُكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا عن معاذ بن جبل قال قلنا يا رسول الله ما حق الجار قال إن استقردتك أقردته وإن استعانك عنته وإن احتاج أعطيته وإن مرد عدته وإن مات تبعت جنازته وإن أسابك خير إن أسابه خير سرك وهيئته هي وهنيته وإن أسابته مصيبة ساءتك وعزيته ولا تأذو بقطار قدرك إلا أن تغرف لها منها ولا تستطيل عليه بالبناء لتشرف عليه وتسد عليه الريح إلا بإذنه وإن اشتريت فاكهة فهد له منها وإلا فادخلها سرا لا يخرج ولدك بشيء منه يغيزون به ولده وهل تفقهون ما أقول لكم لا يؤدي حق الجار إلا القليل ممن رحمه الله This is I, this hadith I found in uh, uh, Bayhaki's uh, Shu'abul Iman, and uh, uh, I uh, cited in the Arabic. Then I will uh, tra set a uh, translation in English, which says it is reported by Muad ibn Jabal that he said, "We said, O Messenger of Allah, what rights does a neighbor have?" The Prophet said, "If he asks." To borrow something, lend it to him. If he asks you for help, help him. If he needs something, give it to him. If he is sick, visit him. If he dies, follow in the funeral procession. If something good happens to him, be happy with him and congratulate him. If something had happens to him, bad happens to him, have sympathy with him and comfort him. Don't harm him with the smell from, with the smell from your pot, unless you serve him some of it. Don't build a high building next to him in order to look down on him and thereby block his breeze, except with his permission. If you buy fruit, give him some. Otherwise, bring it inside secretly and don't let your son take any of it outside and thereby make his son upset. Do you understand what I have said to you? Only a few who are blessed by God truly give the neighbor his full rights. Let me finish my presentation by sharing with you two important lessons of my Bosnian experience. First, it is the knowledge that the law is not in the book, the law is in the heart. And the second, the tolerance is the sign of strength. Intolerance is the sign of weakness. Based on that, I will offer you a Bosnian prayer. We pray to thee, Almighty God, may, breathe, may grief become hope, may revenge become justice, may mother's tears become prayer that Srebrenica never happen again to one or one and nowhere. O oh God, do not let success deceive us, nor failure takes us to despair. Always remind us that failure is a temptation that precedes success. O oh God, Teach us that tolerance is the highest degree of power and the desire for revenge the first sign of weakness. O oh God, if you deprive us of our property, give us hope. If you grant us with success, give us also the will to overcome defeat. 
If you take from us the blessings of health, provide us with the blessings of faith. O oh God, if we sin against people, give us the strength of apology. And if, we, if people sin against us, give us the strength of forgiveness. O oh God, if we forget thee, do not forget us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tsiric. And uh, now we have uh, a little bit of time for questions and answers from the floor. Um, and so if you have questions that you would like to ask of Dr. Tsiric, stay here, uh, please. Uh, if you have questions you'd like to ask of Dr. Tsiric, if you would go to one of the microphones you'll see in the aisles here. And um, let me ask, uh, last night it was all Americans who were the first people who jumped up. Um, I hope that uh, others will please come and feel free to uh, ask your questions uh, if uh, people would come. Don't be timid. Come to the uh, microphones on either side uh, with your questions. Anyone? Anyone who has a question he wants to ask, Dr. Sheikh Cherich. Welcome to the microphone. Or comments. Who's the first? Who's the brave one? Please be upon everyone in this gathering. Um, I'd just like to ask Mufti if he could, my name is Reza Shah Kazmi from Great Britain. Um, I'd just like to ask the Grand Mufti if he could elaborate upon a statement that he made that was of extreme significance and, and great inspiration for all of us in Great Britain. When you addressed the, the Parliament, the Muslim Parliament, saying to us that um, however much the Bosnian people may have desired revenge for the atrocities perpetrated against them, you said whatever, may, whatever our natural feelings may have been, we could not have given vent to those feelings because of the teachings of the Holy Quran on mercy. Could you elaborate upon that for us, please? Uh, well, thank you, Professor Kazmi, because you know the answer, but uh, I will try to give my way of answer. Uh, you know that we inherited that from the Torah, that is, and lafsu bil lafsi wal aynu bil aini wal uzmu bil uzmi. Uh, and uh, also we know walakum fil qisasi haya you Christians I think they know and Jews especially in the Torah that uh, human being has the right for uh, nafs for nafs or the man for man, or the soul for soul, and eye for eye, and so on. So this is not unknown. This is the right of the one that uh, was killed innocently. And you know that the Ten Commandments in the Torah and in the Holy Quran are very explicit. La taktulu nafsallati harram Allahu illa bil haq, which means don't kill the innocent uh, human being. And then also, مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسٍ بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ وَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا This is, وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever kills one person kills them all, and whoever kills um, one has it's if he killed all of mankind. Between the Quran and the Torah, and this is what uh, I believe that we have to make a reunion 
with this uh, and remind the Christians and Jews, which is the last small statement of the Quran. فَمَنْ تَصَدَّقَ بِهِ فَهُوَ كَفَّارَةُ اللَّهِ He who gives of it, it is a um, propitiation for him. In human rights, if you like, or in the reconciliation in the Quran. Hmm? So when uh, several some mothers and women come to me, and when they came to me, and you, you have to remember that there is a family, it's called Alich, Alich family, tribe, you know, Kabila, if you like. 200 members of this particular uh, family have been killed on 11th of July, 1995. I have uh, visited recently in Kozarat, which is seen by Priyadur, not Srebrenica, where you have two mothers who lost six sons each. Six sons. I saw them standing on their feet. And but when they come to me and ask me what to do, I, ha I cannot ask them to forgive. I have no right to ask them. My role is only to explain to them. And I explained to them, I said to them, you have the right for revenge. You have right for I and I. This is said in the Quran. But there is advice in the Quran. If you forgive, وَمَنْ تَصَدَّقَ بِهِ Then you will be forgiven in the hereafter for your sins. Or that would be your kafarat. I didn't know this before so strongly until I got to explain. Because, you know, we live life like everything is okay, but you know only when you are faced with this. My, my uh, brothers, sisters, mothers of severance, listen to me. And even today, this, this uh, prayer that I said, let grief be hope, we repeat every time. And I want to tell you, we were caught as Bosnian Muslims in this business of war and genocide. The same, I think, as Jews did. Once you are in this, then you become a different person. When you see the life is how life is relative. And then you start to uh, think deeply about everything. Let me tell you, I as a Bosnian Muslim are very proud that after the uh, Dayton agreement that we did not have one single one single revenge from the Bosnian Muslims so I want the Christians and Jews when they talk about not you who here in this hall but there is a reputation in the world that Muslims are very unreachable they are unapproachable they are revengeable they don't look for revenge please we are Muslims too and we, we do this on according to our Islamic tradition. We did not take any revenge against Karajic people who uh, have committed the crime. And I think that these women deserve our appreciation and our respect. And by the way, just as we are talking here, Karajic is not yet in The Hague. And you know, the uh, reconciliation is not uh, on us, it is on Belgrade, who are celebrating the war criminal not, uh, and gathering there in Belgrade to support him. For what? For what? This is not in the name of Christianity, this is name of Karadzic. So please distinguish the individual guilt and collective responsibility. Yes, there are individual guilt for the genocide in Bosnia, but, but, the whole Western world, together with the Muslim world, are responsible for genocide in Srebrenica on 11th of July, 1995, because they all said, never again. So this is why we are asking in Europe that 11th of July be proclaimed the commemorative day for the whole Europe and the West, because if we don't do this now, Somebody will get genocide and holocaust in the future in Europe. It is next. Next is you. So please do something for yourself.
We, we have time either for one more question and answer or for two very short questions and short answers. Since I see Bishop Yunan and Dr. Adeyema, uh, perhaps we can make them very short questions and short answers. Thank you. I don't know about the question, but the answer will be long, you see. Ah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm Bishop Munib Yunan, the Lutheran Bishop in Jordan and the Holy Land. Uh, in fact, you know, I am really impressed by, um, by this conference that we are starting to speak in truth for the truth liberates. I have two comments. The first comment, I may disagree with my brother, the Chief Mufti, on understanding Christianity when he spoke Christianity is centralized in hope. We love, do. love. No. Christian, Judaism, hope. Christianity, love. Okay, then I misinterpreted. Maybe you said it the opposite, but they, what they, I wanted they, to say... No, no, no. Okay, no. Then, Judaism, then. hope, Christianity, love, and Islam, justice. Then we agree because St. Okay. Paul says that faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of them is love. My second, you know, point... So I am, uh, you agree with me? No? I agree with you 100%. That's good, very good. We this is common agree. word. Thank you. Yes, but this, my, this is my second comment. My second comment is, um, you know, as His Royal Highness said, Prince Ghazi, that we have a global shake hand um, of reconciliation in this common world. And I really want really to abide on this thing. It's very important that we have a paradigm shift in this common world that we are no more trying to see the differences and magnify the differences. Certainly, we want to identify the differences and the differences among the faiths will remain. My, my comment is not exactly to you, Your Excellency, but it's for us here in this conference. I believe the paradigm shift should be in universities, in the mosques, in the churches, even in the synagogues, that we should nowadays seek for the commonalities. Not, to, not as uh, Bishop, uh, as uh, Professor Wolf said, I mean, we don't want to start a new religion, but we want really to identify the commonalities that seek common values for justice, peace, reconciliation, coexistence, forgiveness, and other things. And for this reason, I believe this conference is a paradigm shift, and the common world is a paradigm shift to seek common values and commonalities. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I, I cannot m agree more with you, because I believe, and this is what I'm trying to explain, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, they have the difficulty with their similarities. This is my, my belief. We, have, we are so similar that we don't want to see that similarity. And then we develop so much that we be different. You see, because how, you have to be saved somehow. But if you share with me this salvation, then it is not full safe salvation. So then, you see, uh, I... I I don't know, the rest of my life I will try to explain to people, especially Christian and Jews, that we have difficulty with our similarities. We have same as catologia. We have the same uh, idea of punishment and paradise. We have the same idea of uh, eschatology and we, are, we have differences. Of course you can speak about differences, but if comparing whether we have more differences or commonalities, I believe that we Jews, Christians and Muslims have more similarities than the differences. Because whenever I read the Quran, the, the half of my Quran is about Ben Israel. I mean, I, I, always, I read all this all the time. So this is... Uh, but how you are going to cope with this? This is, uh, you know, similar are more severe to each other than the different. This is why my thesis. Catholics and Protestants are more difficult to each other, and Sunnis and Shias more difficult to each other than the different. You know? We have to acknowledge that. We have to say that. Thank you. It's short. It okay. was very short. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Adeyema, very briefly, please. Very uh, briefly. I'm prepared to, to let go no, if, got, if you don't have time. We've got three minutes left. Three minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Mukti, uh, for the brilliant presentation. And uh, it's uh, Royal Highness, 
this is uh, a history making conference. My question is simply on your statement concerning the mission of uh, Prophet Muhammad, the peace built upon him, that he didn't come to introduce anything new but to affirm truth and justice. Yes, yes. This did I say. I did not say that. It is said in the Quran. Okay. This is we have in the Quran. I came in order to affirm what is in the Torah and in the Injil. So this is not my statement. I, this is not my intellectual property. This is the property of the Quran. <laughs> <laughs> my question. I, am, I am just following <laughs> what is said in there. And I believe that. So those who are mujaddidin, mujaddidun, they, the history for them starts with them. But the Prophet Muhammad said, no, the history does not start with me. It, there is something, something, Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and so on, so on. So this is it. Mm. This is what we Muslims believe. Whether we act this way, that's a different story. But this is how we believe, yes. Basically, my question is, in what way I, I, need, I need your assistance. In what way did the prophet affirm the mission of Jesus Christ? Oh, very much. Oh, do you... How much time? You will give me? <laughs> no, because we are at the end. Thank you very much for this. We love Isa, Jesus, Jesus, uh, Maryam, you know. I don't need to recite you all the verses of the Quran about it. But for us Muslims, for us Muslims, uh, you know, you have the theology doctrine like you have in Catholics, and we have six. Huh? When I was small, I have a, a, a hoja who didn't know to write and, and read, but he taught me. This is it, huh? I believe in angels in the books and the prophets and in the last day of judgment and that everything what happened in the world it is according to the God will right this is it and this statement could to be you have books you believe we believe we believe in in Torah in Injil and Zabur we believe in all the prophets there are so-called Ulul Azm, huh? and Ulul Azm prophets are those who made the change in history. Adam, Noah, Adam, they are this, okay, Noah, Noah because of his ark, uh, Abraham because of his tawhid, Moses because of his law, and Jesus because of his love. And the Prophet Muhammad, in a, according to our, is an integrative force of all. This is why I translate the, this integrative force. So, let me share with you, wherever you think of me in Africa, in Kenya, remember that I have love for Jesus as you do. And this, is the, this conference, this is what it's all about. That we love each other through Jesus and from Muhammad, and through Abraham, Moses, and of course, Adam and Eve. And may God bless you all. Assalamu alaikum.